Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for digitaldojos.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to create and publish an ebook with Scrivener. My thanks to the folks over at Literature and Latte for not just making this video possible, but the series of content we've been doing on writing from the best writing tools for Mac OS X to the improving your writing workflow video that we recently released on the channel as well as the website. If you're interested in those, be sure to check out the links in the video description down below. And for more information on their products like Scrivener, the amazing writing studio, head over to literaturelatte.com. So here we are in Scrivener, and I'm gonna be talking about how to create and publish your own ebook today. I've recently been using Scrivener to create my own ebook. Can't talk too much about it yet until it's published, but it is an amazing tool that makes creating and exporting an ebook that much more easier. It really does a lot, but I'm gonna be focusing obviously on just an ebook today. Uh, so with that, let's jump right into it. You can head over to, if again, if you're on Mac OS X or Windows, because it's available for both, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and start a new project. I highly recommend selecting fiction and selecting the novel template just because it takes care of a lot of the general formatting for you for publishing an ebook. So go ahead and select that. And you can see here, it even gives you this novel format and how to use this template. They have really great tips right here for compiling an ebook. For example, because they give you things like the recommended size for an import, or the cover, I should say, for an ebook and other things here. So definitely read over this to get more information when creating your first ebook, because this ebook that I'm currently working on is the very, very first one I've ever even created. Uh, so you can see here, I now have a lot of things in this left-hand section here that makes it easy to organize my ebook. You have things like characters and places if you wanna use those, but you're gonna have a, a thing called manuscript up here. I renamed mine to book in this case, just to make it easier. This will contain all of your chapters. So all of your actual content for your book will be here. So, you know, for here, you can even just put your book title if you want or what have you to make it simple. Uh, then you'll have your chapter name. So in this case, it's obviously kind of redundant because it's chapter one, two, three, but uh, of course you can name them anything you want. So I can name this chapter test or, you know, for example, YouTube and all these things here, just as an example. Within these folders are all of the documentation as far as your chapter goes. So your actual media in this case, uh, you know, the title and the formatting, all of that, you can put it here, all your text for your actual chapter, your content would go here, subsections, things of that nature. And as you can see here, I have other ones for these chapters as well. So again, you can easily just put these in here. All of your actual content goes into these folders. The folders represent your chapters. Just remember that it makes it easier. You can easily drag in documents in between these as needed. Next up, the thing that really matters here is your front matter. This is basically what's gonna be going on the front of your ebook, of course. So in this case, your cover image. Your cover image is gonna be what is displayed depending on the ebook reader of your choice, you know, usually on the front or when you're like in the library section showing all your ebooks. So you wanna import your image here. You're gonna have a default one that says cover. You can easily just, you know, delete that and put in the cover image that you wanna use for your specific ebook right there. And those are really the two main parts, of course, of your ebook, the content, the cover, the really, really big portions. Of course, you can use these other sections here to organize. Another recommendation, your research. This is where Scrivener really shines because not only does it allow you to create and write uh, within Scrivener, but you can do your research here. So any additional notes uh, that you need to add, if you have, for example, a web page that you're getting uh, information or references from for your ebook, you can easily just add the web page in here. You just click web page and you type in an address. And what this does is it opens up a web page. So for example, I told you, head over to my website right here, digitaldojos.com. It'll automatically put the web page within Scrivener here, which allows me to easily just jump between this research page here. So you can see here, it loads it, and I can easily just read the site within Scrivener here, take even document notes and stuff like that. This makes it easier because this way I don't have to jump between my browser and creating my content. I simply can just click over here and then jump back to my content and then again, get writing. It really makes it that much more simpler in all in one place here. So definitely take advantage of that research portion when you're creating your ebook. All right, so you got your ebook all put together. You got all the chapters, you got all the media, you put everything together here. It's all sorted out in the appropriate you know, folders here. You have your front matter sorted out as far as your cover. Let's go about compiling it. So now go over to the top left, click on file. If you're on OS 10, same thing for Windows, you go over to file, click on compile. And then you're gonna to wanna to fill in the summary here. You wanna go ahead and compile it for the format that you wanna put it out there. So for example, EPUB is a very general ebook format. A lot of different services support EPUB. However, if you're doing something specifically, like you just wanna to publish to the Kindle, then you might wanna do a .mobi. If you're doing just iBooks, then again, that is a 
ebook.x. For this case, I'm just going to do EPUB because it's a very general ebook format here. You can put in the basic information as far as the title of the book, the author of the book, and of course you select the cover image here. So it'll detect all the images that you put as far as the front matter, and then you select the one that you want to use. In this case, I'm using cover right here. Uh, and then you can adjust some options here. But where Scrivener really shines is in the all options or the advanced options here. If you click on all options, this allows you to do all sorts of compilation options as far as adjusting the content here. You can add page breaks or leave it as is here. Uh, you can add in separators between the content. So between text here, you can have text separators. You can have a section break between folders, which represent essentially chapters here. So you can have an empty line, a single return. Again, you can do a custom there. Uh, under the cover options, you can adjust things with the image here. General formatting here, this is really useful. So for example, for a chapter header, so for example, I have my chapter one here. Within the titles, I can have them have, you know, formatting as far as like heading one. I might want my chapter one to say heading one, but I might want the title to be in a heading two. I may want that bold as well. So you can easily adjust here. So if I want those titles under my chapter one to be like that, I can adjust all the formatting here. You can do italicize, you can do underlining. Of course, you can center your titles here. So as far as like the, you can click on the actual document here. So here's the actual document of my chapter one. Uh, let's say I wanted all of this, you know, center aligned here. I can easily just center align it just like that I can, before I even compile it. So you can do all the editing and formatting before even compiling it all automatically here. Title adjustments, you can do prefixes and suffixes, uh, things of that nature. You can adjust your layout here as far as adding page padding, generating HTML table of contents, which is really useful. It does that by default. Transformations here, you can have it straight in smart quotes, convert underlines to italics, remove highlighting, remove hyperlinks if you don't want them included. You have HTML settings, replacements, so you can actually replace words and phrases here before, again, exporting your ebook. Uh, you can see statistics options here, table options, Footnotes and comments options for some people who may want to override the font for the footnotes or remove them entirely, you can do that. Last but not least, the advanced metadata. So you can add contributors, subject, description, publishers, dates, and so on. So after, of course, you fill out all these advanced options or compilation options, you simply hit compile. You select the destination of which you want to export the file to. You hit export and you let Scrivener take care of the rest. Here, just like that, I'm now previewing my ebook I just made all entirely in Scrivener on my iBooks application in this case, since it supports EPUB format. You can see it gives me a table of contents here or the chapter names I set up. It gives me my cover image easily viewed here. I can click onto a contents or a chapter, I should say, to jump right into it and see how it formats here. Obviously, iBooks is you know made for things like reading on the iPad and stuff like that. It takes care of all that formatting if you're reading on that device. And just like that, it's that simple to create and publish an ebook. Obviously, this is one that is very, you know, this is for testing purposes. But of course, you know, if you have all your content, you have it all structured, you take the time to create it, Scrivener makes it that much more easier, not just to write and create your ebook, but to, again, publish it and export it out in the format and take care of a lot of the technical aspects behind it, it makes it so much more easier. And then, of course, after you've done this, you can take that EPUB file, you can take that Mobi file or .docx and then publish it on the respective networks, whether it's Apple's iTunes or Amazon's Kindle, you know, their Amazon store and stuff like that, or maybe you're just giving out your ebook for free. So it's all up to you, but Scrivener is a tool that makes it easy to create and publish it at that. So hope you enjoyed this video, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, for more information on their products, head over to literatureandlatte.com. And of course, for more videos from us and content from us, head over to digitaldojos.com. Thanks for watching.